So if you use a WordPress website, you will know that security is something that needs to be right at the top of your list of things to do to make sure your site is secure and avoids getting hacked. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a deal over on AppSumo for Hide My WP Ghost, a security plugin that gives you lots and lots of options. But is it worth investing your time, effort and money into? Well, let's take a look together in a first look video. So this is what we're going to take a look at today, which is Hide My WP Ghost by Squirrely. It's a security plugin for WordPress. Seems okay. I haven't tried it. This is going to be my first look, so you can kind of jump on with me and see how this all works. And if you think it's something that's worth investing in. If you do, links in the description if you want to use that. No problem if you want to use your own. Okay, so what does this actually give us? Let's take a look at the options. So the plans and features, you're going to get lifetime access to this, all future updates on the ghost plan. You can stack up to three codes. This is going to give you customized paths, protect your WordPress common paths and files. Basically, it kind of hides those behind alternatives. You can spoof your WordPress site into looking like it's Joomla or something to help reduce the sort of potential for people knowing exactly what to find to be able to hack it. There's URL mapping and text mapping, brute force protection, XML, RPC protection, and so on. So there's some useful features inside there. And if you go for the bottom plan, you're still going to get 10 websites included. Jump up to the double plan, you're going to get unlimited. And if you want to use this with clients, you can jump up to the, tri the, the triple plan or multiple plan, and you enable white label options as well. So that just allows you to be able to go and sort of white label this. Your clients, customers don't know exactly what you're using. Now, this is still pretty new over on AppSumo. You can see currently at the time of recording this, there's only two reviews on here. Both are giving it five stars, but you can kind of take that for what it's worth at this point in time. As with everything on AppSumo, I would always recommend reading both the reviews, checking out the number of deals that have been bought to make sure it's not being incentivized for people that buy one deal to give it a five star review. Now, on top of the reviews, I would also suggest checking out the questions area for this particular tool as well. This gives you a good way of seeing how receptive the developers behind the actual plugin are to the community of AppSumo and the questions and things like that are being sort of raised and concerns. It's also worth just looking at how they will listen to what people want from a deal. Sometimes deals come up onto AppSumo that are not necessarily the best deals and the AppSumo community will definitely let those people know about it. Obviously, take this for what it's worth. Just do your research is what I would always suggest. Do your due diligence as it were. Okay, so I'm going to assume that I've done all of that and we're going to go with taking a look at it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a copy of this now, the 10 license one, and see how this all stacks up. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and purchased it, you're going to need to activate this using the following instructions inside your AppSumo account, set things up on there, and then you can download the plugin, which is exactly where I am right now. So let's add a new plugin, choose to upload the plugin, and we're just going to simply add this to our site and install now. Now, the first thing I would recommend when using anything like this that changes the default paths and things like that for anything to do with your WordPress site is make sure you take a full backup just in case you need to reinstall everything put it back exactly where it was. Just make sure you do that before you do anything. This is a site that doesn't matter for me. If anything goes wrong, I don't really care. So let's just activate this plugin. Once that's activated, we're going to need to go ahead and log in so we can make sure everything is set up and connected to our actual account. Now this can apparently take up to an hour to complete if you create a new account as part of the AppSumo deal. So just bear in mind that you may have a little bit of a delay if that is the case, that's the reason why. Okay, so let's go to settings for hide my WP ghost. And you can see this is where we've got to drop in the license token and I'm gonna do exactly that. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and added your access token, you can see this takes you in now, does a quick check of your site and then runs through a kind of wizard that says these are the things you really need to address right now. If you want to, you can run a full security check at this point with the looks of it, and then you have all these different options. So I am literally going to go through this with you to see exactly how this all works and see if I actually totally destroy my site. If I do, it's going to be frustrating, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so this is what it's coming up with first of all. So you want to change the WP content includes and other common paths. And this is, like I say, where you could potentially cause problems for yourself, lock yourself out and so on by changing these paths. So like I say, just make sure you've got that backup in place if you use this feature. Let's run a full security check just to double check that everything is in place. And you can see this is where we are right now. 29 items have passed and 10 have failed. And we can see this shows us all the things that we can take a look at that are all okay. 
And then anything that isn't correct or anything that they think needs to be updated, we can go ahead and use the fix it. We can also take a look at the info and see some more information about this particular thing that's been flagged up as either being completed and okay or something we need to fix. So the WP content path is accessible. So it's important to hide the common WordPress paths to prevent attacks on vulnerable plugins and themes. Also, it's important to hide the names of plugins and themes to make it possible for bots to detect them. So Yes, definitely something you want to make sure you do. So if we hit this fix it, I'm either going to kill my site or it's going to carry on working okay with that little problem corrected. Let's hit that. Okay, we need to activate safe mode or ghost mode. Where's that? Let's have a little look. Um, yeah, I don't know where that is. So first thing for me is, okay, it's great to pull up these, these sort of messages saying you need to do this, that, and the other, but where are the settings for that? Let's try this one. First, you need to activate safe mode or ghost mode. Cool. Where? Where do we need to activate this? Let's go to our overview. I'll have a look inside there. Okay. So let's just say activate secure. Okay. Hi, do WP ghost features. Let's try it and see what happens. Activate this feature. Oh, okay. Right. So this is where it kind of does it. So one of those things that for me, if you're going to do something like that, you're going to say you need to activate this particular mode. Give me a link to that mode so I know exactly where it is so I can quickly make those changes. So we have the safe mode and we have ghost mode. Again, it would be nice to sort of just pop up and say, right, these are what these particular things mean. We go step-by-step -step setup, so that could be quite useful. So to hide it from detectors and hacker bots, how to use brute force protection and so on. But again, let's have just some little things, little question marks in the corner that pops and says, that's what safe mode is. If you enable safe mode, these are the things that's gonna happen and a link then through to the full information. Second thing I really don't like right now is I've just paid for this plugin. I personally don't care about hitting love us, show us my link and all these kinds of things. Get rid of that crap off you. You want to do that, do that on the free plugin. Don't do it on the paid plugin. Simple as. That's my opinion anyway. So what happens if we turn to safe mode? Okay, so safe mode will set these predefined paths and tells us all the paths are in there. Paths are not physically changed on your server. Safe mode will add the rewrite rules in your config file to hide the old paths from hackers. So worst case scenario, you could probably make sure you do a backup of your actual HT access file and so on, your config file, just make sure that everything is in place. So before we do this, let's just hop over to the backup and restore options and see what's inside there. Okay, so click backup to download uh, and the download will start about you can use the backup for all your sites. Let's hit backup settings now and see what happens. Okay, so we've got a backup of those settings. So I'm assuming we could probably restore it back to exactly where it is right now. Kind of seems logical. Okay, let's go back to that overview section. And let's just come down to this security paths, activate features. Let's put this thing into, let's look what ghost mode does. So these paths are not physically changing the server. So again, it tells us these are going to give us different paths and things. So the admin is going to be ghost dash admin instead of the normal WP dash admin. Uh, and the difference between that and safe mode is that just puts new login in there. So just make sure you take a note of these or take a screenshot of it or something, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little screenshot of this just so I know exactly what's going to be set on there so i can always go and take a look and i'll do exactly the same for ghost mode and we'll just do the same thing on there so we'll just take a little screenshot of this just so i've got a list of all those different things and i would recommend you do the same thing when you're not sure what's going on with this so let's start in safe mode first of all and we'll click continue Okay, so you can simulate a CMS. And like I said earlier on, if you want to kind of spoof this a little bit to make it look like you're using a different CMS over WordPress to obfuscate kind of the normal paths that people might check for, you could do that. You can see we can set this up to using no CMS, various different versions of Drupal or Joomla. We'll leave it as it is as the default. So this is exactly what you would see if you were doing the same thing. Let's hit save and see what happens. Okay, so now, Next steps, you want to run a front end login test and log in inside the pop up. So let's just do that. Click login. And there we go. Seems to be logging me in. Okay, so that looks like that's all working. So nice we get this little check inside here just to confirm that things are working the way they expect. And we can say, yep, that's okay. So you see, in case you can't log in, you can use there's your safe URL. So again, I'm just going to take a little screenshot of this just so I can see exactly if I need to restore things, I've got those saved. Okay, so yes, it's working. Okay, so we've now set this into safe mode. And this then opens up all these extra options on the left-hand side. So admin security, you can see we can hide that and we can change the path to something else if we want to. So we could set this to be something like wp-login. And you want to hide this from non-admin users, hide the admin path and so on. Again, set this up to whatever you think is relevant to what you're trying to do with your setup. So let's just take a little look if this is working 
where we change this over. So let's open up a different browser. Let's open up Safari. So we've got a completely different browser open so we can see exactly what's going on here. Okay, so let's just type in wp-admin, which would be the normal link. And as we can see, that just dumps you back with no error message, anything, which is a good thing because the last thing you want are error messages popping up that kind of may show where your actual admin is being located or moved to those kinds of things. So now we set this to WP login, for example, let's just test that. And you see that takes us over then into the login section and we can just log into the site. So let's just test that out. Let's just try logging in. And there we go, that's logged us in fine. So we can see that our login section is all set up and working correctly with our different alternative domain. Okay, so next up, let's take a look at this login security and see what we have inside there. So you can see this now allows us to configure how we want things for new login, for lost password, registration, the logout, those kinds of things. And again, you can customize this to your heart's content kind of thing. At least these have help on them, which take you over and show you how these work, which is good. But I think this is something you're definitely going to take a little bit of time on the first site, making sure that everything is set up the way that you want it to be. And then if you wanted to, you could use that backup and restore option to just export those default options for your different login sections, those kinds of things, which could be useful in a quick way of working, which is quite nice. I do like the option for that. I'm not going to configure any of these. I just want to kind of look through and see what's there. But you can see we can change the login security for the lost passwords and so on. Pretty cool. Ajax security. Inside here, again, we've got the option to change those paths if we want to, and we can hide this from the, the, the URL and so on, and again, change the path in the Ajax calls. Now, this is something that I would say with any kind of security plugin, whether you're using this or whether you're using something like iTheme security, those kinds of things, WordFence and so on, they are not necessarily for people that have no idea what they're doing. You do need to have some understanding of what it is you're trying to change, what it is you're trying to protect against. And the wizards are useful and a great starting point. And for most use cases, we'll probably cover you for those common problems. So you could work through all the various different things that that sort of overview gives us, the security check gives us, and just follow that. But if you want to dig in a little deeper, you're a little bit more confident, then you do have these kind of granular controls that allow us to go through and set up these things like Ajax, user security, hiding your dashboard, board, those kinds of things. So I like to see that. That is pretty cool to see we've got those options inside there. I say I'm no security expert, so I kind of rely on these to a certain extent to do the heavy lifting for me, and then I'll customize and tweak the things that I know that I want to hide away. So plugin security, custom paths, so we can change a different path inside there. We've got advanced options inside here as well, so we can customize plugin names if you want to. You can hide WordPress all plugins path, hide all plugins. Theme security, again, we've got the ability to hide various different parts of this, including renaming the different locations and so on. And this kind of seems to be the overarching theme using this particular plugin is to hide away from people that know where they're looking to kind of avoid those basic um, issues, should we say, with out of date themes, out of date plugins, those kinds of things. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that as it is. You can see there's quite a lot of different options inside there and depend upon how you feel about doing this, you could customize this if you wanted to, or you could simply just use the security check and go ahead and use those as the basis and go through and fix those different things. So you can see we can come through, we've got security keys updated, we can generate new keys from here. Now, let's try this again, am I? There we go. So now because I switched into that different mode, either ghost mode or safe mode, you can see I can make those changes to these things that are problematic and we can hit fix it. So we could literally, if you wanted to, you want to keep it as simple as possible, run through these, fix these different options. And then if you want to, we can run another, another scan on there. We'll let that run through its scan and see what comes back up. Okay, so now we've got 39 pass with zero failed. So we can see that we've covered all those bases and we've gone through everything. But if we want to, we can go in and take a look what else is available. And then, like I say, you could use this backup and restore option. So now we've kind of configured this. If you're using the same server setup on another site, you could back these settings up and then you could export those to another site, which is pretty cool to see. Under advanced. Okay, so we've got custom safe URL parameters. So this basically tags it onto the end of various different parts of your site, various different links that makes it unique which you could then go ahead and you could change this if you wanted to. So if a site for some reason got compromised, you could come in and re change these and have something new to actually log in. So you won't get this plain login. You'll have this string of characters afterwards that need to be in there to allow you to sort of like deactivate these custom paths and so on. Compatibility. So if you're using Manage WP, we can see we can enable this to make sure that it works correctly with that. And also we've got things like late loading and clean login page. 
email notifications. So if you enable this, it's going to give you a notification if you have issues, I'm assuming, and if admin uh, details are changed. So if you were using this as part of a business, and you may have someone else that actually does all the security side of things, you're using a plugin like this, you could be notified if something changes, like a URL login and so on, just so you can make sure that everything has been confirmed and you have the up-to-date information. That's my understanding with this anyway. So yeah, this basically seems like this is kind of a situation where you can kind of go through, you can go through and just use simply the option for the security check and then follow all the rules, or you can come in and you can do this all manually to set it up exactly as you want to. I'm assuming if we switch to ghost mode, it gives us more options again, makes it even more difficult, I'm assuming, to find out the different paths and so on. So you can see there's all the different paths as we saw earlier on. Okay, so that's basically the plugin. Let's take a quick look over at the site and you can see this is where we can see the pricing and what's kind of included. So we are looking at the ghost, I think it was the ghost well, one of the ghost plans anyway. But you can see this basically just gives you all the information about what's included, what you can protect, those kinds of things, the free versus the pro. So if you wanted to try the free version out to see if this is going to be something that is useful to you, you get on with it before shelling out any money through the AppSumo deal, you could do that. But with the AppSumo deal, you still get a 60-day money back. So if you don't like it, you can get your money back on it, no problems at all. And if we take a look on the WordPress.org, this is for the free version, but we can see currently... This has been updated seven days ago for the free version, which might be updated a little bit less uh, often than the pro version. You can see there's over 100,000 active installs and we're getting four and a half out of five stars, which is pretty decent. You know, that's not too bad at all. When it comes down to support, which is always a good place to look to see how active and responsive the developers are, you can see issues resolved in the last two months, 12 out of 13. So that's good to see that they're actively updating and also making sure that any issues that are out there are being resolved and kept up to date. So it's good to see that, especially when it comes to working with a security plugin like this. So yeah, I would recommend go and take a look through, see if this is something that interests you, see if you think the deal is any good, test drive the free version if you think it's going to be worthwhile. The deal itself over on AppSumo is pretty respectable. It's not a bad option with 10 included in the base plan. I always like to see decent usage levels. But I would say with any kind of thing like this, you need to do your own due diligence. Keep an eye on that feedback. Keep an eye on those questions. See how you feel this actually operates and anything that kind of seems like a deal breaker. Lots of times these will actually come up inside here with the questions and the feedback and so on. So that's my first look at Hide My WP Ghost. Do I think it's worth investing your money into? Well, at this point in time, I haven't really tested it extensively enough to give you a solid kind of finding on it. I would say that the cost involved, $59 for 10 website licenses for lifetime, is a decent investment. So you could easily test this out for yourself for the next 60 days, and if you find it works well, keep it. If you find it doesn't, get your money back from AppSumo with no problems whatsoever. But if you used Hide My WP Ghost in the past, or you use it right now, let me know in the comment section below if you found it useful and you keep on using it. I'd love to know. As always, all the applicable links for this and everything else covered in the video are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.